they appear to be portraits of one big happy family. In pictures posted on Facebook, David and Louise Turpin surrounded by their 13 children. But behind the smiles and matching outfits, the kids were not allowed to clean themselves. A reality, authorities say, that is so disturbing. Extremely malnourished to the point where they have muscle wasting and cognitive damage. It shocked the country. It appears that it started being tied up with rope, then they moved up to chains and padlocks. Now this mother and father are the ones in shackles, accused of inflicting years of cruelty on their own flesh and blood. This is off the charts, sadistic. Charges of torture, false imprisonment, and child abuse allegedly happening inside the couple's home in the town of Paris, California. The alleged horror all hidden in plain sight. But the family story started 2,300 miles away in the heart of Appalachia, Princeton, West Virginia, where Louise and David grew up during the 70s and 80s. I'm full of emotion. I'm angry. I'm sad. Heartbroken, confused as to how this happened. Elizabeth Flores is Louise's younger sister. So we had a pretty normal life inside the home that I lived in. She says Louise was always a leader. And it was her way or no way. And if she had to sneak around to do it, she would do it. The younger sister says that she and others in the family were sexually abused and wonders whether the impact on the family might have been a contributing factor. There was sexual abuse by a family member, a close family member, not our parents. We were not allowed to talk about it, and I'm not making excuses for my sister, but I think that that may have been an underlining issue. Another constant in her life, Elizabeth says, was David Turpin, who lived just a few miles away. Here he is in his high school yearbook from 1979, sporting that same bowl haircut he has today. He was quiet, nerdy. He was uh, a good student. He tended to dress well. Sometimes he would wear a bow tie. Louise actually started dating him at 15. My dad didn't want her to because he was so much older. Eventually, when Louise was only 16 and David was almost 23, the couple ran away together. Elizabeth says police found them several days later in Texas. Louise's parents decided not to pursue charges. The couple then got married. It was 1985. In 1986, the couple moved to Texas where David had a job. By the 90s, they were living at this house in Fort Worth where Elizabeth spent a summer during college living with them. By then, the Turpins already had four kids and Elizabeth says she noticed things were off. I remember they were really strict on the oldest daughter. Like, they wanted her in her room a lot, and they would let her come down and eat meals. It used to bother me because before she sat down, she had to get permission, and I just felt like maybe I shouldn't pry, maybe I shouldn't question her parenting. It was almost like she didn't want me talking to the kids, and they weren't allowed to talk to me without permission. Elizabeth says Louise had come up with a type of hybrid religion, but they didn't go to church. She says David was very reserved, and Louise made all the rules. She always seemed to be in control, but there was always looks between them, and he was always sitting back watching. I was told I couldn't make phone calls from their phone. I wasn't allowed to have anybody over. I wasn't allowed to tell anybody where I lived. I wasn't allowed to talk to anybody or hang out with anybody. And if I wanted to do those things, I had to leave and find another place to go. And Elizabeth says things got even creepier. I would get in the shower and I'd lock the door. <laughs> and Louise would unlock it with a coat hanger and they would both come in there. They wouldn't leave and talk out of the shower and they made me get out of the shower in front of them. Elizabeth says Louise eventually found out she had talked to friends at work and kicked her out. Despite David's job, the family's Fort Worth house was foreclosed on. The scene they left behind, documented by the new homeowner, deplorable filth, scratches on the backs of doors and walls, which the new homeowner assumed came from animals. By 2000, the Turpins had moved to this home on a sprawling 36 acres in the rural Texas town of Rio Vista. It's actually even hard to find on the map. Neighbors recall sporadic sightings and strange behavior. Something's going on over there. You know, something's not right. Then in 2010, once again, money problems apparently forced them out. Billy Baldwin bought the Turpins home also in a foreclosure sale and says he also found a mess and some bizarre photographs. Pretty bad shape. The Turpin family went west to California. It's unclear why they moved to California. They don't have any family out here. 
Perhaps it was for work. You just don't know. Eventually, they settled in Paris, a small city located between Los Angeles and San Diego, David registering his house as the Sandcastle Day School with state authorities so his kids could be homeschooled. A neighbor remembered seeing something odd one night. You know, I'd come home at anywhere from 12.30 to 3 in the morning. There's the kids marching between those two rooms up there. So they were marching literally in the middle of the night, back and forth from room to room. It looked like they were doing a loop. And how long would they march back and forth for in, in single file? Hours. Hours. Yeah. Finally, for the siblings living in what prosecutors said was hell, a breaking point. Police say two of the kids were able to escape out of a window just after 6 a.m. on Sunday. The younger child, frightened, turns back. The 17-year-old keeps going, using a deactivated cell phone to call 911. And she explained that her siblings were being held against their will, and some were chained. Deputies, when they arrived inside the house, they noticed that the children were malnourished, it was uh, very dirty, and the conditions were horrific. With what some are calling a house of horrors discovered in a California suburb. The parents arrested at the scene, the children, authorities say, were severely malnourished. The oldest, a 29-year-old woman, weighs just 82 pounds. It sounds like sadistic torture. It's all horrific. It's hard to say what's more horrific in a case like this. But, you know, you've got parents that are torturing their children, causing them um, pain, causing them suffering over a prolonged period of time through malnourishment, through physical abuse, through psychological abuse. Authorities say hidden behind a neatly manicured lawn in a cookie cutter house, a veritable mountain of potential evidence. When deputies found the 12 siblings, what were the conditions that they encountered in that house? Conditions are, are absolutely deplorable. They're, it, it's, it's smelled as filthy. Um, it's clear that some of the victims, when they're chained, are not being taken to the bathroom to relieve themselves. Investigators say the children were not allowed to play, but they were allowed to keep journals. My guess is that they're going to be, that's going to be powerful evidence about what was happening from the perspective of the victims, what was happening in that house. In court yesterday, David and Louise Turpin pleaded not guilty to a combined 75 total counts, including charges of torture, child abuse, and false imprisonment. Investigators say only the two-year-old child appears to have escaped the abuse. The couple is being held on $12 million bail each. Elizabeth says she hasn't seen the children in more than a decade. She didn't know what was going on, she says, until she saw the news. Somebody posted the link on my Facebook and said, is this your sicko sister? My initial response was, oh my God, oh my God, and I broke down. I knew my sister was different from us, but I would have never, ever imagined this, ever. And for the 13 siblings who investigators say have already endured so much, the long, arduous road to recovery still lies ahead. Stay with us.